My friends, I greet you in the most precious name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. What a joy it is to be with you on this WYTV7 for this episode of Journey of Hope. Thank you for joining us. I encourage you to tell others about this WYTV7. Encourage people to hear the word of God and come to know Christ as their Savior and Lord. Today, for a short time of meditation, we will be talking about a night of fear. A night of fear. Matthew chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out of fear. But straight away, I love it. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. We're talking about a night of fear. Students of animal behavior counted that the fear is both, contended that fear is both a universal emotion and the first of the emotion to be developed in the humans and the beast. All the creation lies beneath the terror of fear. By the way, Everybody, regardless of their religious background, no matter who they are, they all have fear. And I'm telling you, Bible is the only book that talks about 365 times. Let me repeat again. 365 times, fear not, fear not, fear not. One for every day of the year. He wants to tell you, no matter who you are, if you come to Christ, if you accept him as the Lord and Savior of your life, repent of your sin and ask God to lead your life. He tells you, Samuel Thomas, fear not. John, fear not. Smith, fear not. We're talking about a night of fear. This is the story when Jesus compelled his disciples to get into the boat. Have you ever caught a little bird? in your hand holding it holding that little bird in your hand felt the terrified rapid beating of its little heart have you ever felt that the bird had neither experience not an acquaintance with you or any other person it had no reason to fear you except that of instinct reaction although we may be higher in the animal kingdom than the bird than the bird yet there beats in the breast of each of us that dreadful emotion called fear. Perhaps we can learn how better to cope with this problem as we discover within our text that we read from Matthew chapter 14, verse 26 to 27, that we can understand from our text three great questions concerning fear. Number one, why does fear usually arise? Verse 24 of Matthew chapter 14 of our text says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Fear, my friends, usually arises in the midst of life of storms. In other words, fear usually arise in the midst of life's storms. As long as the disciples were close to Jesus, they did not fear. It was not until the disciples were on their own in the midst of the sea, tossed by the waves, they were struck by fear. In other words, when they were away from Christ, fear struck them. Life storm, my friends, may rest within God's will. Doesn't, don't misunderstand. You don't face storm just because you disobey God. You face storm even when you obey God. Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Jesus constrained them. They were not going against God. They were not going contrary to God's will. 
they were following the command of God's Son. The disciples did not get themselves into this difficulty. Christ clearly constrained them to get into the ship and go before him to the other side of the sea. Surely, one reason that life storm may well rest in God's will is because they may serve to strengthen our own faith. Mark tells us that Jesus saw them harassed, but for a few time, he did not go to them. Previously, when they were in a storm at sea, Christ was with them, and they needed not only to awake him, this time, he wanted them to face the storm with only their faith, so he remained ashore. Their faith was more severely tried and strengthened when Christ was not in the boat. Another reason that life storms may rest within God's will is that they may be unavoidable in accomplishing God's purpose. Christ had told the disciples to cross the lake and dock on the west side. If they were to accomplish this purpose, they had to sail immediately, even if it meant sailing in the face of a storm. Nevertheless, they did launch out knowing full well the risk they were running. For you to become what God wants you to may be necessary for you to go through life storms. In other words, the storm that God gives us is to develop a Christ-like faith in our life. Life storm may rest within God's will. Life storm may be intensified by prayerlessness. After sending the disciples away, Jesus went onto the mountain to pray. At this same time, disciples, at the same time, disciples were in the ship. In the middle of the uh, ocean, Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 14, verse 23 to 24, the Bible says, while they were in the midst of the ocean, Jesus went to pray. Simply because the disciples were instructed to cross the sea did not mean they had no need or no time for prayer. How many times that we just follow instruction, we run and we forget to pray. May I take this time to remind you, do not forget to pray before you journey. Do not forget to thank God when your journey ends. Do not forget to pray to God before your meals. Don't forget to pray to God after you're done with the meal. As Christians, prayer should be a habit. Oh, we feel so protected. Our highways are good. We have cops to keep us safe. We think that there's no need to pray. Oh, no. Jesus sent them. There was no need for him to pray. No, but he did. Because he's telling you and me an important instruction that even though he may ask us to go somewhere, but it is important that we pray. We should not be so busy that we forget to prepare ourselves with prayer. Prayerlessness makes knowledge of God's will difficult and consequently intensifies the storms of life. Matthew Henry says, the bolder spirits must wait for a call to hazardous enterprises, and we must not rashly and presumptuously thirst ourselves upon them. Life storms are often intensified by prayerlessness because prayerlessness robs from us any inner spiritual power. The disciples were, the disciples' boat was not a sailboat, but rather a raw boat. That was not sailing. They were just on a simple boat. There, these were strong and experienced men of the sea sitting in this boat. But Bible says all their physical strength was no match for the storm they were facing in the boat. There's was a need not for spiritual power, but for inner spiritual power. The storms was more inward than outward. And prayerlessness had robbed them of the inner spiritual reserve that could have been theirs. Why does fear come? 
we saw that fear comes when we are away from the presence of God. Fear comes because usually we are depending on our own strength. Fear comes because we depend not on God and we do not pray. Why do fear arise? Having seen where fear arises, we now ask why do it why does it arise in the life of a Christian? Why can't the Christian sail through the storms of life with faith unfaltering and emotions undisturbed? There's only one answer. Because of his failure to perceive the presence of Christ. That is the reason God gives us storms. Because we sometimes forget his presence. The presence of Christ may come in an unexpected manner and thus may not be recognized. Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Christ walking on the sea was a most unexpected manner in which to reveal his presence to the disciples. The manner in which Christ chooses to reveal his presence does not always conform to our expectation. Perhaps the disciples expected to meet Christ on the other side, but certainly not at 4 a.m. Three and a half miles from the shore out to the open sea. It is not likely that you would expect Christ's presence to be felt at the bedside of a critically ill child or in the midst of a family strife or in the depth of a financial reversals, but often the presence of Christ is felt even there. Whatever manner Christ may choose to reveal his presence is intended to meet your specific need. Verse 25 says that Jesus went to them. The disciples were in trouble and the, uh, the coming of Christ in this unexpected manner was intended to meet their immediate need. The presence of Christ may be misinterpreted by many. The New International Version translates verse 26 like this. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. They misinterpreted the presence of Christ as a ghost. The presence of Christ has been interpreted at times as something to fear and at the other times as one's own imagination. But it is neither of this. And so to interpret the presence of Christ in the midst of the problem, we must know that his presence is not to be misinterpreted Is presence is for the blessing intended. When we talk about a night of fear, we have seen what does fear usually arise? When does it arise? When we are away from God. What does fear, why does fear arise? Because we are not knowing the presence of Christ in our life. What can dispel fear? None of us like to live beneath the dark shadow of fear. But when, but what can dispel the most contagious of all human emotions. Christian courage can dispel fear. But straight away, Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, for it is I. Be not afraid. Jesus gives the answer in his first words. Take courage. Be of good cheer. Christian courage, my friend, is grounded in Christ alone. Jesus said, it is I. He did not say, trust in yourself or trust in the strength of your ship. Christian courage accepts the words of Christ. These disciples asked for no signs or omens. They simply accepted the words of their Savior and acted on it. Response to the call of faith can dispel fear. Matthew chapter 14, 
verse 28 through 29. Lord, if it be thou, implies that Peter takes for granted this is indeed the Lord. When his Lord said, come, Peter responded to this call of faith and stepped out upon water. Response to the call of faith must be made in the face of severest test. If Peter's faith were ever severely tested, it was at this time. No sheer profession would keep him from sinking into the storm, stormy sea. No mere desire to demonstrate his superior faith could, keep, could make him walk on the water. Faith alone was required for this task. And the response soon will reveal his faith. May I say this, friends? God honors faith that honors him. In other words, if your faith honors God, he will honor your faith. Response to the call of faith must be made to the most unusual request. Should Christ ask you, can you walk on the sea? If he asks you to come, almost anyone can walk on the land. But you are called to walk on the sea. What is your sea in particular? It may be the sea of sickness. It may be the sea of loneliness. It may be the sea of sorrow. It may be the sea of pain. It may be the sea of temptation. But God's grace and with your faith, you too can walk on your sea. A proper response to the call of faith serves to confirm your faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. The rescuing hand of Christ can dispel fear. Under sudden impulse of confidence in Christ, mingled with his own self-confidence, Peter proposed and undertook to walk on the water himself. But his faith failed just when his task was almost finished, yet the rescuing hand Christ was extended. The rescuing hand of Christ is extended even when our faith fails. Praise God for that. The rescuing hand of Christ is readily offered when we acknowledge to him our need. The rescuing hand of Christ is all sufficient. For the scripture says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. The indwelling presence of Christ, my friends, can dispel fear. The presence of Christ imparts peace and security. For when they are, that is Christ and Peter, were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Not before that, but when they came. That is Peter and Christ, when they entered into the ship, the wind ceased. The indwelling presence of Christ brings the response of joy and adoration to those who will receive the Lord as their Savior. My friends, the only problem that we have, because of fear, we get into all kind of religion. Because of fear, we try to do all kind of things that are contrary to the Word of God. We think that by going to a holy place, our fear will be dispelled. We think that by reading some novel, our fears can be dispelled. No. The only person who can get rid of your fear is the one who conquers fear. The one who has conquered fear. And his name is Jesus Christ, my Lord. Are you facing fear in life? We talked about a night of fear. Just because you have fear does not mean that you're outside the will of God. Maybe God's wanting you to put your trust in him more. My friends, a lot of religions take advantage of this thing called fear. Because of this fear, many religions are in business today. But Christ is not based out of religion. Christianity is based out of a personal relationship with Christ. Jesus can walk on water. He can come to the ICU. He can come into your house. He can come into the most difficult situation of your life. You can never predict how God will show up. But he does. 
and he will tell you, fear not, be of good courage, it is I, come. Even when you fail, he will reach out with his hand. Nail-pierced hands of Christ will hold you and sustain you. Will you trust him? There is no one under heaven above the earth whereby we can be saved apart from Jesus Christ. If you'd like to know more about this, how to get rid of fear, please contact us at P.O. Box 8808, Columbus, Georgia, 31808. Now may the peace of God abide with you till we meet again. Thank you.